I stand here before you to take an opportunity to share through yourselves with the nation the state of the electricity supply system of our country. It is known to all of us that we have been going through very serious challenges in terms of capacity available to supply the nation. There are a number of factors, not reasons or excuses. There are a number of factors behind the challenge of insufficient capacity. First and foremost, I believe that we did not as a nation keep pace with the level of investments required to secure supplies to our economy and our nation. A major part of this reason is that we have been for the best part of 25 years under very severe sanctions. And our government has not had the opportunity or the chance to enlist support of investors and lenders to strengthen our infrastructure. I think you'll find this throughout all the categories of primary infrastructure, be it railways, roads, and power, and water. So that is the first major challenge that the nation has had to deal with. Secondly, we have been very unfortunate as Zimbabwe and as a region that the hydrology of the Zambezi system has been very severe, severely and adversely affected. This hydrology is very central to our energy, central to our energy balance. To appreciate the extent of it, we have a maximum demand today of around 1,800 megawatts. Kariba complex should otherwise be giving us 1,050 megawatts, but it is barely doing 250 megawatts. We have lost 800 megawatts at Kariba due to the hydrology, and that is one of the most fundamental reasons why there is load shedding today. Add to that, there's been shortcomings also on our part as ZESA and government. We have not supported IPP projects as much as we should have. But I'm pleased to realize and to share with you that there have been some very considerable moves to strengthen our support for independent power projects. We are going forward with a change of technologies from the conventional fossil fuel fired power generation to renewable energy. And in that process, the government licensed quite a number of projects, but they have not been operational because of a number of factors. I want to say the government is addressing uh, the factors so that um, we should have dependable energy balance in the future, as well as a transition to renewable energy or to the green economy, as we put it. Specifically in Zimbabwe, we have the opportunity of the Zambezi complex, the Zambezi River complex, which has got three very large sites for power generation. In fact, four, including the three that have not yet been developed. I think everybody knows about Kariba. We have Batoka, which is coming next. We have Mpata Gorge, which is quite large. And we have Devil's Gorge, which is quite large. I say this because we always must 
look to the future and be able to plan for it in a way that will make our economy sustainable. The government, together with the Zambian government, they assist with enlisting support and investment for these facilities. Now that there's been some lifting of economic sanctions on Zimbabwe, we are beginning to see a lot of investment interest in the Zambezi facilities. Together with boundless solar energy and endless land in Zimbabwe to support what is, after all, a land-based technology, PV solar, we have infinite opportunities to secure dependable capacity and energy supply for our economy for generations and generations to come. We are fortunate. There are many countries that then enjoy uh, facilities that we have at our doorstep. But your questions, the questions that I can read uh, in your face is that, what about now? You are talking about the future. What about now? Um, ZESA has been ingenious in what we call uh, plan Bs, thinking outside the box. Number one, we notice that one of our biggest segments of energy consumption is the ferrochrome industry, which we cannot stop because it's a big employer and a big end of foreign currency for the nation. But we have been successful in discussing with them to transition from conventional grid supply to also depend on PV solar plants, which they can build themselves. Together, they consume between 350 and 400 megawatts out of the 1,800 sorry, 1,800 megawatts, which means that uh, in the next 12 to 15 months, I think, when they build their own power stations, which they are doing, uh, it will inject another 3 to 400 megawatts into the network. Bear in mind. That is the average capacity that we load shared every day, three to 400 megawatts. So by this move alone, we are going to end the pressure for load shedding when the ferrochrome industries produce their own power. We are not stopping there. We then looked at the agriculture sector. Both the ferrochrome industries and the agriculture sector are the only segments of our customer base <clears throat> that continue to be subsidized. And we are very anxious to win them off subsidies. What has that meant? It has meant that we are putting up facilities to install solar power stations on all our 31,000 farms, A2 farms, and commercial farms, as well as communal irrigation schemes. When we put them on PV solar, there are a number of ad advantages that are quite obvious. The first one is that solar energy itself, PV, is a land-based technology. So they already have the land, and they will secure part of the cost. Solar energy is also sensitive to interconnection costs. But ZESA is already supplying them. So the interconnection infrastructure is already on the farms. The third dimension of the advantage is that they are typically a low capacity factor customer or customers. They use only 30, 35, at most 40% uh, of the time they use electricity mostly for irrigation. Now with PV solar, the energy is coming every day. Uh, for 10 hours or so. So they have an opportunity to capture this energy and sell it back to ZESA with what we call net, net metering. <clears throat> what does that do? Um, it helps them also to get income even when they are not planting anything. Um, so we are well on our way to launch this project. Other more lucrative short-term opportunities are as follows. Beyond the PV solar 
uh, IPPs. We have supported a number of IPPs in the conventional generation sector, particularly uh, coal-fired power plants. As I speak to you, we have three new coal-fired power stations about to start. In fact, the first one of them, I got a call from China this morning to say that this week they're actually shipping the equipment <coughs> for a coal-fired power plant that will be 720 megawatts. This is more than Wangi 7 and 8 that we all know about. There is also a 300 megawatt power station coal-fired that is starting shortly. And um, the press will have already announced that we are signing up with a huge Indian conglomerate called Jindal. Um, Jindal, uh, they come under descriptions uh, in the mining sector, in the power sector, and in other primary infrastructure sector that including railways. We're signing up with them this week for two major projects. The first one is to repair Wange units one to six to give us some 800 megawatts depend dependable capacity. The second one is to build a new power station units 9, 10, 11, and 12, which will give us 2,800 megawatts altogether. Um, because those ones will give us uh, 1,200 megawatts, the four units, the four new units, and um, when we add the other other power stations, we come to almost 3,000 megawatts of base load capacity. This is sufficient for ZESA to be able to respond appropriately with energy security to meet our targets for 2030, the upper middle income economy. I want to talk again um, beyond energy security about <laughs> energy supply. Let me say this, that uh, we have programs that are designed to deliver universal access, which means that by 2030, every Zimbabwean household should have electricity. Uh, it sounds like a pipe dream, but I would like to assure the media that uh, we spent the last three years planning this program, and we've learned a lot from other countries, and that Zimbabwe has the capacity to deliver that target. What it means, however, is that we have to manufacture all the equipment that we need for extending the grid to the rural areas. On that account, I am also, I'm also pleased to share with you the success <coughs> that we have um, registered already. Um, we are um, <coughs> in the process at the moment of setting up um, SPVs to manufacture everything locally. We are assisted by the fact that Zimbabwe now has a massive new steel industry. And on that account, most of our infrastructure is based on steel. So you can see that transmission towers, distribution towers, street lighting poles, substation structural uh, construction, uh, they're all still developments. And um, we are signing up with a number of companies from Sweden, there's a project. From UAE, there are five projects. From India, there's a project, a big one. From China, there are about 11 projects. In fact, on our books at the moment, we are carrying some 12 uh, potential SPVs to manufacture a whole range of distribution uh, hardware for 
expanding our grid. We are even signing up with the world's third largest manufacturer of solar panels, a distribution or a distributorship, where we shall represent them in Southern Africa for their products. Um, transformers were already manufacturing and exporting, but there are two more transformer assembly lines that are coming under this new focus. Meters, we have two companies that are coming for that. We already announced to the media uh, the closure of one project to manufacture all our conductor, all our cable locally. So we are seeing, in addition to this, thousands and thousands of jobs being created by localizing the industries that manufacture the equipment that we require on the grid. I believe that uh, the only other thing I need to add is that as we roll out uh, the grid to rural communities, we are electrifying the entire institutions and establishments that we find in rural areas, be they schools or clinics, communal irrigation schemes, townships, hospitals, water pumping facilities, irrigation schemes, they will all have grid power as a result of these developments. Kojikoro, we say, Gorerino, Chinusara, Chinemtzimuachu. Um, ladies and gentlemen, let me pause there. I know you have a million questions. I thank you for your audience, your patience. But what I've tried to do is to highlight um, a very extensive program of uh, ZESA. Um, I think I might have just missed out saying that everywhere that we shall roll out the grid, we shall also have a composite program of putting fiber optic cables. So there is a universal electrification running together with universal datafication. Um, that is through Powertel, one of our subsidiaries which specializes in communications and the internet. Konapo Konapo, Ipapo Ipapo Pazetian Prime, DSTV Channel 294, the place to be.